Celebrating 11 years of possibility. Pilot Flying J and Halloran Hilton Hill present Anything is Possible. Today's guest, Maul Anderson. Welcome to Anything is Possible. I'm Halloran Hilton Hill, and as you know, these are great stories about great people who prove with their lives that anything is possible. My guest today is Maul Anderson. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Halloran. If you were to interview yourself, <laughs> what would be the first question you'd ask yourself? Oh, you're going to do this to me the whole time, aren't you? This <laughs> is like, oh time. my gosh. Well, what would I ask me? Yeah, what would you ask you? Um, wow. And by the way, what would you ask this you versus oh. Mall at 17? What okay. would you ask this you Well, I can you answer first? the Mall at 17 first. Okay. What were you thinking? <laughs> <laughs> I would say, why weren't you paying attention? Yeah. You know, why didn't you understand that you could do anything? Absolutely anything. And, you know, one of my favorite sayings is, Halloran, that, you know, a man is who he says he is. Right. And when I hear some of those words, you know, at 17, I don't think I had the capacity to have them mean as much as they do to me now. I hear somebody say, a man is who he is. I think, wow, that is really powerful. Right. That means you can change it if you don't like it. Right. You could say something different. Exactly. So you would ask 17-year-old Ma, yeah. what were you thinking? <laughs> what were you thinking? What would you ask Maul today? Wow, what would I ask her today? I would say, what are you going to do next? Yeah, okay, so now this mall mm -hmm. can ask, what are you going to do next? Because right. you have such a sense of possibility. Yes, absolutely. Right. Perfect. So let's roll back to your childhood and oh, wow. where your life began. <laughs> where are you from? I am from Scottsdale, Arizona, and, but I think I was always Southern. You know, I never met my real father, but I understand he came from North Carolina. So that's kind of close by. Yeah, you've so, got some yeah. southern DNA. I think I, when I got to the south, it never felt more right. Right. So you grow up in uh, Arizona, you mm -hmm. said? I did. What was that like? Um, well, Arizona is a very interesting place. You know, it's very manicured and very brown but rolling green. It's, it's a whole different kind of town. It's um, very structured. Maybe that's the best way. It's all very kind of premeditated, structured, I should say. Right. So was your life very premeditated and structured? Yes. Because, yeah, it was. <laughs> Those are the words I'm choosing, right? <laughs> right. Yes. Yeah, so, so you grew up from zero to what in Arizona? Um, I grew up from, actually, I have to back up, I was born in Mount Kisco, New York. Okay. Upper state. And um, I've seen pictures of it. It's absolutely beautiful. I spent a lot of time in New York City, but have never been up to Mount Kisco. But my mom was a movie star. She literally was in all the B Western. She was under contract to Republic Studios, wow. and her name, her acting stage name, is Marilyn Kay. Is she still alive? She is still alive. She's 83. Wow. And quite the diva. <laughs> She's something else. And uh, she went to do a movie with Rex Allen and Ben Johnson in the Superstition Mountains in Arizona. And that's how we ended up out there. Wow. What, yeah. what was it like growing up the daughter of an actress? Well, it was interesting. My mom stopped acting as soon as I could really probably understand that that's what she did. You know, I would see her in a movie, I'll never forget she did this movie called Voodoo Woman. It was this one of those scary B movies with uh, Tarzan and, and whatnot. And, hot lava was coming down the mountain and it was I was seeing her like tied to a post and he was coming in to save her and, and it was like terrorizing actually you know to see her like that and but I didn't understand but my mom did a huge shift she did a shift probably when I was about five or six years old and that was the day where she put her hand on the television and Oral Roberts was on I'll never forget it even to a young age and um, that's when she invited the Lord into her heart and it changed her life forever at that point. So she, after she put her hand on the television, mm -hmm. what did she become in terms of how she was and then how that affected your home life? Well, my mom is one of those amazing people who when she does something, she She's does it 200%. She is all in, you know, so she doesn't do it just a little bit. She goes the full gambit. And she was so talented that she actually had a show on Channel 21 called The Gap, God Answers Prayer. And my mom would go on, and if somebody didn't show up, Halloran, and you know how this would be, right. she'd be sitting there doing the entire show by herself, talking to the camera. And it didn't even phase her. 
So did that influence you then? Well, you know, it's funny. I didn't think about any of that until recently, but at the time, I didn't think it did because I I kind of was, uh, and I, how do I say this? Um, I probably because my mom was so intensely um, following her dream. I think that I probably was more, um, how should I say this, protective of what I was going to do and where I was going to head, if that makes any sense. So you didn't want to get vacuumed into her dream. Well. You wanted your own. Yeah. And so you didn't want to. Yeah. It, was it sort of like you didn't want to reveal what you wanted because you didn't want her to shut it down? That could be. That could be. You know, it's interesting because at the time, I think one of the hardest things for me is um, I was always thought that I should be a model or I should be an actress or I should do all of these things just because of my physical appearance. Right. And so um, that was all fine, but I think that my mom at the time, and when I say this, it's with great love and admiration when I say this about my mom because, you know, we as parents and now that I've been a parent and raised children, we know that we all do the best we can do. Right. Best with whatever information that we have to give. And so my mom was doing what she thought was best. And so anything that I was doing, if it was modeling or acting at the time, probably wasn't going to be the right thing to be doing. Really? Yeah. Because of her experience? I think she was being protective. Or she didn't want to lose you to that world? I think she was being protective, and I think she thought it would maybe take me down a bad path. Wow. My guest is Mal Anderson. Um, you said that you would ask the 17-year-old version of you, what were you thinking? <laughs> Let's ask her what she was thinking uh, when we come back. This is Anything is Possible. My guest is Mal Anderson. We'll find out what she was thinking in just a moment. <laughs> Possibility powered by Pilot Flying J, Covenant Health, Home Federal, and the Knoxville News Sentinel. Coming up. Number one, it wasn't my fault. Number two, it wasn't going to define who I was. It wouldn't have any impact on the fact that I could still become whoever it was I wanted to be. Welcome back to Anything is Possible. I'm Hallard Hilton Hill and my guest is Mal Anderson. So we were talking about yes. the 17 year old you. Wow. Yeah. You grew up in Arizona. Your mother was mm -hmm. an actress. Mm -hmm. um, she put her hand on the TV. She did. Um, under the ministry of Oral Roberts. Yes. And then became a devout charismatic. Yes, very much so. Were you charismatic as well? Well, that depends on which way you mean. <laughs> Do I have charisma? I've been accused Why, of that. Yes. <laughs> no, um, let me tell you, as a child, I think I was, and I still am, a very open soul. Right. And I think my own belief in God was so strong, and no matter what anyone could say or what anyone could do, no one was able to break my spirit, which mm. I think was my one of my greatest attributes. Um, because the hope and the spirit is so important when it comes to breaking through the things that you've gone through that would normally keep you down. Right. You know, and I had enough things that happened to me as a child that, that could have easily kept me down and did for a while, but because I allowed it to. What were some of the things you went through that could have broken you, that could have kept you down? Well, you know, and as, as they say these things, I want you to know that we all have things. Absolutely. And, in no part is it ever really an excuse. We can decide to use it as an excuse for as long as we want to until we decide that we have to do something about it. So uh, number one would be I never got to meet my real father, which was probably the way it was supposed to be. And then by, from the age of four to six, I was abused by a good family friend who was the sitter. And so that was a very... Um, tough experience. It's one that I never forgot. It wasn't like, you know, I know some people, they say they didn't remember and one day they woke up and I'm sure that's very true for them. For me, it wasn't that. For me, I went into what I call uh, God gives us this wonder wonderful ability to go into shock. And the shock protects you sometimes, right. just like when somebody has a car right. accident, same thing. And for me, it was an accident. You know, it was an accident that was happening to me and it was trauma. And so I had, thank goodness, that ability to shut down and protect myself because I was too small of a child to do otherwise. Right. So how did you make it past those things? 
Because I would imagine not having the anchor of having your father present in your life. I did have a stepfather who was wonderful. Having abuse in your life, mm -hmm. um, whatever subconscious part of you that that hides in, right. and it has an operating function that you may not even understand until years later. Right. Um, I wonder how that impacted who you became by 17 and, and going forward. Well, it impacted me a lot. Um, I think because I didn't really know who I was. And you can't, first of all, know who you are at that age, I, I don't think. But it also kept me from growing up in a way where I felt like I could um, have someone to talk to about it. You know, when you are abused, there's so much that goes through you. When you are told that your parents will give you away or that it's your fault. You know, this is the biggest thing I try to get through to people. It is not your fault when this happens. And, but you don't have any way as a child to comprehend that wow. and to make sense of that. So you're trying to say to yourself, what's wrong with me? I must have done something wrong that I'm being hurt like this. And at the same time, it's by someone you know. So then you don't understand what that means. So it's a very complex and confusing thing to have to deal with at that age. And I think what you do is you don't deal with it. And then one day, you deal with it. What was that day and what, what made you deal with it and realize that Maul Anderson has to figure out who she is so she can figure out the possibility of her life? Well, I think, I wish I could say it happened overnight, but it didn't. You go through many different stages in life. And I think if, if anybody is listening today, the one thing I hope that they get from me is that question about the 17-year-old, is if I had just been able to talk to somebody, mm -hmm. and somebody could have told me that number one, it wasn't my fault, number two, it wasn't gonna define who I was. It wouldn't have any impact on the fact that I could still become whoever it was I wanted to be and that it didn't ruin me. I think those were the most important things I would say to that 17-year-old right now and anybody else who's ever been through this because you carry so much burden and so much guilt, especially when you're in the Christian world. And when I say the Christian world, I say that again with great affection because my relationship with God never changed. Right. And even though I have gone through different things in different times where um, I may have felt badly because that happened, thinking it must have been because of the way I looked, or it must right. have been, I mean, that's what right. people start to tell you. Right. You know, uh, which is, when you think about telling a child that, that's pretty crazy. You that's know. really crazy. Yeah, because, I mean, and my parents did not find out about it until I was in my 20s. I did not tell them. And it wasn't until I can only imagine what it was like when you told them. Yeah, I think the shock was pretty strong. What, what parents go through when you've gone all that time, I think, again, here's another lesson I, I want to share, and that's for parents. If their child does come to them, it doesn't matter whether it did happen or didn't happen at that moment. What they need to do is embrace the fact that the child is opening them up to them, and they need to make that child feel safe and talk them through it to find out whatever the truth is, regardless. But you have to support your child. Wow, that's big. All right, pick your next question. <laughs> it will be one of four. Man, these are like... Here, let me... And you, good, please read it, because I don't have my glasses on. Oh, cool. This is, um, <laughs> what are you not good at? What's one thing you know you're not good at? When we come back from the break... <laughs> Oh, good. Will, Give me a few yeah, minutes to think about this. We'll talk about that. Maul Anderson is my guest. And by the way, um, you've, you've racked up a pretty incredible career. Um, you're an author. Uh, you're a TV personality. You have a media company. I want to get into all of that. Mm -hmm. And you actually won a very prestigious award I'm hearing recently. Oh. So I want to talk about all of that. And thank you for being here today. Okay. Maul Anderson is my guest. You're watching Anything is Possible. Coming up. I couldn't become Maul Anderson today right. if I had not experienced every one of those things and hurt and cried and laughed my way right. to where I was supposed to be. Welcome back to Anything is Possible. My guest is Maul Anderson. Thank you for being here today. Thanks for having me. Um, so let's start with the <laughs> question you drew, which was, what are you not good at? And the reason I asked that question, a lot of people yeah that are possibility people that I've talked to, one of the most important decisions that they make in their life is, 
I'm not good at this, so I'm not going to do that. <laughs> and it, it actually helps them focus on what they're good at, but right. they get clear. I'm not that person. Right. What about you? What are you not good at? Well, I can tell you this. I am not good at not dealing with things head on really? and communicating. But I can say that because I spent most of my childhood and, and growing up as a young adult not speaking. You know, your voice gets taken away from you when you're abused. So you learn to not say what you're really feeling and you don't communicate when you're hurting and you don't say the things you need to say. So you make a lot of mistakes because you just get yourself into situations where you just go along with whatever you've got to do, you know, because you don't have a voice. Wow. But now I do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Tell me if some. First of all, tell me about this award you just won uh, for women in media. It hasn't been a year yet, and I get this letter in the mail saying, "Congratulations, you won a Gracie Award." And I'm thinking, "Okay, this must be this must be not for me." Right. And I look at the name. I see Julianne Moore. I see Amy Poehler, and I see Melissa Etheridge. I'm like, "Okay, no wait." So I start at the top again, right. and I go back through, and I'm like, "Okay, this isn't right." But somehow, some way. They have decided to honor me, and I'm going to be the one person up there that people are going to say, Mal who? <laughs> you know? so, so you went from uh, you went from a young woman who had been abused and was unsure of what she wanted and how to get it and without a voice mm -hmm. to being someone you, you have unlimited opportunity. You have a son. You have a great husband. Mm -hmm. yeah, Talk about your family, but then I want to make our way to what made possibility possible because you really do have kind of a an infectious spirit and uh, a glowing spirit. Thank you. But I know it wasn't always like that. So let's start with family first. Tell me about your son, because he's been through some stuff. Yeah, my son is amazing. I have to tell you, we just you know went on a trip together, and I am so blessed. I remember sitting there at dinner the other night and thinking, thank you, God, that somehow this young man created through all the stuff his mom went through, we kind of grew up together, you know, became this incredible man, you know, who's an amazing husband and who's this great young businessman and who has such great ethics. I mean, I really, it's probably one of my proudest accomplishments. Wow. Now let's talk about uh, your husband and well, <laughs> look at you. That's a whole other thing. <laughs> <laughs> you, you started blushing, actually. Yeah. You, you said you moved to Nashville and just became a designer. I had saved a lot from my, my broadcasting, all the different things I had done and invested well. But, you know, the well was going to run dry soon if I wasn't, you know, getting it together. And so I literally turned on the TV and I had an Oprah moment. I did. I, I, I admit it. And she had on um, Debbie Ford and they were doing life makeovers. Mm. And Debbie was saying, it's really important for you to find your passion. And how you find your passion is one of the greatest ways, she said, was to go through your photographs throughout your life. And I thought, I thought to myself, this is perfect because I had just moved to Nashville and I had all my photographs in boxes. I hadn't gotten them to albums yet, so I quick ran and got them at commercial time. I started going through them and I had all these photographs that were rubber band together and I'm laying them out and as I'm laying them out, I'm looking and I'm looking and, I'm th and all of a sudden, it was like I had this re really ridiculous light bulb moment. All the things, all the cliches were happening. Right. They were before and afters of everywhere I lived. They were friends' houses, everybody's houses that I'd done. I realized I was supposed to be a designer. And all of a sudden, I'm remembering making Barbie furniture and, and slip covers for the Barbie couches and, and, and moving furniture at seven years old and, and redecorating my parents' house. I mean, I did crazy things, and no one ever thought she should be a designer. Mm. That's another thing, parents, pay attention. Right. Because there are signs of what your children's passions are, even at six years old, you know? I, just you, <laughs> you telling the story of being a designer, what, what just struck me just then was the fact that here's this young girl that has been abused. You wanted the power to redesign your world. You wanted to create an after. Yes, I kept trying to redesign it every year up until then, but I finally had to face it and design it authentically. Right. So you had to find money to make in Nashville, but at that same yes. time, you're redesigning your world. Well, and, you're creating a new after. And Halloran, one of the most important quotes I ever heard that really helped push me was Gary Zukoff said, hmm. give up the belief 
that the past could be any different than it was. And I heard that, and I said it like five times. Give up the belief that the past could have been any different. And I said, wait a minute. So all this stuff I've been hanging on to, right. all of this, the anger, the hurts, you know, the relationships that didn't go right, all of this, I, I just went, everything happened exactly the way God intended because I couldn't get from A to Z. Right. And I couldn't become Mal Anderson today. Right if I had not experienced every one of those things and hurt and cried and laughed my way right. to where I was supposed to be. So it, it was in the designing mm -hmm. that you found a whole new life. I did. And, the, and, the, and your soulmate and all of that. Well, my first book was called Change Your Home, Change Your Life. Right. Because it really is true. You can redesign your life and you can do it at any time. That's why I tell the 17 year old now, I'd say, you can do it now. You can start now. Imagine if I had started this at 17. Wow. But that wasn't the way I was supposed to do it. But maybe there's a 17-year-old out there who can. Give me the 30-second on this man of your dreams. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, 30 seconds isn't long enough, Helen. Um, you know, I had prayed and dreamed and hoped uh, of connecting, the ultimate connection. To me, when you meet your soulmate, it's like, when you look into the mirror and the reflection that comes back to you is what you feel in your heart, there are no questions to be answered. Right. You know, and when you know the, the, the relationship is not correct, when you're going through trying to find your soulmate, what I tell people is if you are not together in yourself, if you are not healed inside your soul and in your heart, and if you don't have your feet firmly planted on the ground, you can't choose a soulmate. Thank you for being here today well, because I think me. your life is a model of, of beauty and possibility and one of the things I know you're committed to is creating beautiful spaces for people inside and out. Can I say one more thing? Absolutely. No judgment, forgiveness. Hmm. Forgiveness is so important. If you can't forgive yourself and forgive other people, you don't have to like them, but you got to forgive them. That will be such a powerful start of healing. Wow. It has been great having you on the show. See, we could talk for we another. We could talk. You and I could talk yeah, for hours. Yeah, we could talk for another. I have questions to ask you. You should ask me some. <laughs> have me on your radio show and ask me a okay. bunch of questions. Thank you for being on the broadcast. We'll see you next time.